Welcome back to the Mayo Clinic Cardiovascular Podcast Series, Interviews with the Experts. I'm your host, Sharon Hayes. I'm a non-invasive cardiologist and vice chair of faculty development and academic uh, advancement for the Department of Cardiovascular Medicine here in Rochester, Minnesota. And today I'm joined by Dr. Steve Epsky, who is professor of medicine in the Preventive Cardiology Division, where he serves as an expert in lipid management and lifestyle here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. So today our topic is statin myopathy. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. So we all know that statins are a very powerful tool to lower LDL cholesterol and cardiovascular risk, especially for secondary prevention, but a not insignificant proportion of individuals who would benefit from aggressive lipid lowering uh, therapy have statin intolerance, which is usually due to muscle symptoms such as myalgias, cramping, or weakness. So today we'll discuss the current approach and more novel options to address statin intolerance. So Steve, I wanna first ask how prevalent, I know this is kind of a loaded question, how prevalent is statin intolerance and how do we, you, make that diagnosis? Yes, if you look at the randomized clinical trials, you know, originally they would actually do statin lead-ins for six weeks. And if you couldn't tolerate the statin, you were a screen failure, not intolerant because you hadn't been randomized. And now, of course, and everybody's been on statins at some point or another. They just asked, are you intolerant of statins? And you can't go in the study. So about 1% of people in statin trials, and statins are the most widely studied medicine in the history of the world, you know, hundreds of thousands of patients, 1% were statin intolerant. When you get to real life, it's more like 15 to 20%. And who knows how much of that is truly intolerance. But unfortunately, we, you know, when a patient has it and says, doctor, I hurt, you just have to believe them. You know, you have to believe them, but also I, I also often think of the um, the patient population we are often treating has a lot of aches and pains. And at least in my experience, the first thing they want to blame is a med. Um, and so that that brings uh, when they particularly they need it. That's always something that um, I struggle with sometimes, whether it's a, on how to deal with that patient. Is there a particular statin or statins that are more or less likely to cause statin-associated muscle symptoms? Well, there used to be a lot of talk about hydrophilic, lipophilic statins. Maybe that was better or worse. That hasn't seemed to make a difference. Um, they talk about some of the different pleiotrophic effects and effects of statins. That doesn't make a difference. It basically looks like it's more the dose. The higher the dose you give, um, the, the more likely they are to have statin intolerance. Um, the, we've looked at things here like the SLCO1B1 gene, which was associated with simvastatin uh, intolerance. We didn't actually find that here. What we found the only thing that really, uh, nothing was predictive of intolerance genetically. Uh, having Jill Bears was actually somewhat preventive of statin intolerance, and um, which is, as you know, a congenital uh, disease or not disease, just a, a point that your uh, your bilirubin is a little bit higher. So there really isn't um, a single drug that's better in everybody. There are they seems to run in families. Some families can take a torvastatin, and others take simvastatin, and they get all sorts of aches. So I always ask the patient, "Hey, talk to your brothers and sisters and see what they say." Well, I think the other psychological thing, even if they're not related, hey, my husband's on that and he's doing great. I'm definitely going to pick that statin, even if it's not my go-to, because right. they already have a a positive view, right? There's some psychology. Exactly. And if they hurt, I say, stop it for a month. Let it wash out. The day you stop it, do a stick figure of your body and write down where you hurt and how much it is on a scale of one to 10. And let's look at it in a month. And they'll call me back and say, you know, it really hadn't changed. Yeah. I say that it yeah. wasn't the statin. Yeah. So on the flip side, are there any protective measures or medications that can serve to minimize the likelihood of statin myalgias? Well, there's been a lot of uh, energy put into the uh, some of the uh, drugs like coenzyme Q10. Um, that uh, when you give coenzyme Q10 and it's a double blind study, it doesn't seem to make a difference. When it's open label and patients know what they're getting and they're getting the, the actual CoQ10, it does seem to help. I do tell patients try to buy the, the ubiquinol that ends in OL, which is the alcohol, which is better absorbed than, you, than the ubiquinone. Take a couple hundred milligrams a day. You can start it before you start the statin, a few weeks before. And if it doesn't help you within two or three months, it's probably not going to help you and you could stop it. 
those studies, it always is curious is how much is a powerful placebo effect, mm-hmm. but I'll, which as a physician, I will take any time if it helps mm-hmm. my patients. Mm-hmm. Or the fact that maybe there are some people, it really helps, but they're drowned out in those, uh, you know, in those mm-hmm. Uh, studies, the randomized studies. Right. And part of that is I think that there are so many things that can cause statin intolerance. And uh, there's overlap with other problems, as you mentioned. But it's not just that uh, that it's the you know, low CoQ10 levels in your blood. People that have more pain in the dental chair are also more likely to have statin intolerance. Giving a patient with fibromyalgia, you know, statin, it can be very, very uh, difficult for them. Yeah, so people with chronic pain or hypersensitivity to pain are more likely to feel this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So how is treating high cholesterol levels becoming more like treating high blood pressure levels? Well, you know, we used to give big doses of uh, antihypertensives, and we found there's some side effects there. So now the guidelines say give a little bit of a calcium blocker, give a little bit of a diuretic, give a, a little bit of, a, um, of an ACE or an ARB. And at lower doses, they can be better tolerated with different mechanisms that it lowers blood pressure. That's what we're finding now with uh, with treating uh, hyperlipidemia. Giving a lower dose of a statin, you know, instead of a high dose of rosuvastatin or etorva, maybe a moderate dose, adding in something like azetamide. Because as you take a statin, you absorb more cholesterol in your small intestine because we have a receptor site there that's made just to uh, absorb cholesterol because it's so important to us mammals. And so you can give a couple of doses uh, or uh, lower a dose of, uh, of these two agents that work synergistically together. And it's been shown actually to lower LDL better. It's been shown to have better uh, tolerance so they stay on the medicines with actually a lower, better outcomes too. And uh, so it's a, it's a triple win. And now that these drugs are all generic, um, you know, it's gotten to be quite popular and guidelines are starting to say, you know, start to think of giving azetamibe earlier. What newer non-statin agents um, have been shown to reduce the risk of myalgias? What are our other options, either in combination, yeah. as we just talked about, or instead? Sure. Well, first, any any agent that lowers cholesterol can give you a statin intolerance, can, er, although it's a, it's a muscle ache. It's not the statin, something like bimpedoic acid. If you look in the uh, the studies, it was four or five percent incidence of having muscle aches. You can look at PCSK9 inhibitors, which are injectable, or inclizaran, another injectable uh, drug. Those can all cause uh, statin type uh, intolerance symptoms, muscle aches. Although I must admit, the injectables really are more just local reactions where the the needle goes in. Um, but still, the the monoclonal antibodies can cause some off-target effects. Hopefully, inclizaran will be, which is very little use in this country, but I think it will grow as we find that may be better tolerated. Thank you, Steve, because this is a vexing problem. As you said, I think we physicians all got told this is this hardly ever happens. It happens in less than 3% of your patients. And and that was a disservice to our patients because we didn't believe them, right? We, we said that you're an outlier, but they're yeah. not. It's just really common. So true. And remember, statins were out for 20 years before we realized they actually increased the risk of diabetes. And it's very easy to diagnose that. Just check a blood sugar level, do an A1C, and you can find it. Now, this thing with uh, statin intolerance, there's no simple blood test that you can draw and say, oh, you have this, you know, you have this muscle ache. So we, we really have to listen to our patients and try different options with the different drugs at lower doses and, uh, and tell them we'll get you through this. You know, just if, if I tell patients, if you have symptoms and they're intolerable, don't contact me and ask me if you can stop it. Contact me and tell me you stopped it for a month <laughs> and then let me right. know how you are after a month. Yeah, that's great ad- practical advice in terms of being really proactive, knowing that a common side effect might happen and equipping the patient with that. Mm-hmm. It em- not only equips, it empowers them. Um, and, and then you may hear from fewer people. Because they stop it for a month and they say, hey, I feel the same. I'm just going to go back on it. Yeah. And they know I'm on their side. I'm not trying to, I don't want them to hurt, you know. Exactly. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, This was a great conversation about a really common problem. Thanks for having me, Sharon. So this wraps up this week's episode of Interviews with the Experts. 
I'd like to thank again, Dr. Kavetsky for joining us today on this important topic. We look forward to you joining us next week for another interview with the expert. Be well. At Mayo Clinic, continuous learning fuels world-class care. I am Dr. Francisco Lopez Jimenez, Chair of the Division of Preventive Cardiology. If today's episode gave you a fresh insight, imagine what a full course can do for your patients. Please check out the link cveducation.mayo.edu and explore our live and online programs, quick on demand modules, and CME accredited master classes created and taught by the very voices you trust here. Join thousands of clinicians who have already turned curiosity into expertise. Level up your practice now at cveducation.mayo.edu.